Well, the Disaster Emergency Committee, which brings together 15 leading UK charities, says that their appeal for Ukraine has already raised £55 million in its first day, including what the DEC called generous donations from the Queen, the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Cambridge. The government matched the first £20 million donated as part of its UK aid match scheme, while hundreds of thousands of people rushed to give money to the appeal within hours of its launch. Well, after his meeting with fellow Western foreign ministers in Brussels today, the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, warned that President Putin could open a Pandora's box of trouble for the entire world, adding that NATO did not see conflict, but if conflict comes to us, we are ready for it, he said. A sign of just how far relations between the US and Russia have deteriorated since the end of Soviet communism seemed to Russia in a whole new era of history. From Washington, Kieran Mutley now reports. In Washington, D.C., America's history and identity is carved in stone. And its monuments speak not just to presidents and peace, but to war. What role does America want to grasp amidst conflict thousands of miles away in Ukraine? Joe Biden's State of the Union address harkened back to an almost Cold War era of rhetoric. When the history of this era is written, Putin's war in Ukraine will have left Russia weaker and the rest of the world stronger. This more aggressive stance towards Russia is different to 30 years ago, when there was more of a hopeful tone after the fall of the Berlin Wall. It's time to build on our new relationship with the Soviet Union, to endorse and encourage a peaceful process of internal change toward democracy and economic opportunity. How did we get here? An angered Russia invading a sovereign nation in the old European theater of war, and a United States that won't intervene for the cause of democracy. There was, I think, a time of relative um, friendliness and peace between both the United States and Russia. Um, but I think as the years went on, we sort of took that for granted a little bit and started really focusing on other regions. I mean, the 2001 uh, September 11th attacks were really the harbinger of the U.S. era in the Middle East. And a lot of the focus shifted from Russia, I think, to other regions. Frankly, you know, one of the defects of American foreign policy is we tend to vacillate between this sort of messianic approach that we're going to end tyranny in the world or just kind of saying we're going to retrench. So where is America today as it responds to Ukraine with sanctions but not troops on the ground? The war in Ukraine has transformed geopolitics. NATO feels emboldened. Germany has performed a complete Russian U-turn. But what about the United States? Will it now shift its focus back to Europe and defending democracy? Or has Europe stepped up to protect itself, meaning that Washington can focus on Asia and its main existential threat, China? While Washington has worried about Beijing in recent years, it did once commit itself to helping Eastern European democracies after their independence from Moscow. As you strive to build a peaceful and prosperous Ukraine, we will stand by you. The independent Ukraine of today is at the very heart of Europe. I think it's shameful that we have made pledges that ultimately we won't follow through on. And my whole approach is let's be much more clear and realistic about what we will and can do, especially in Europe. We have seen Biden, I think, approach this conflict in a way of strength and resolve. We'll continue to aid the Ukrainian people as they defend their country and help ease their suffering. I don't remember the last time a State of the Union address started with a 12-minute talk about a conflict that was happening in uh, a country that isn't our ally. President Biden himself is a bit of a romantic transatlanticist. The bad news for Europe over the long term is that a shift to Asia is inevitable because the Chinese have the capacity and the will to move, for instance, to attack Taiwan. And the conflict in Ukraine raises a question some are asking here. What if Donald Trump was still in the White House? Do you think this would have happened if Donald Trump was still president? I think the proof is there. It didn't happen when Donald Trump was president. So the Biden administration came into office after four years of Trump, knowing that we needed to repair the relationship. We needed to recommit to our European allies. Putin 
is the aggressor. Do you think this could define the Biden administration? I think this is another one of those moments that history will look at as a moment that changed the liberal order that we've um, believed in and relied upon for, for so many years. And the way that Biden goes about this, I think, will be a defining moment of his presidency. Joe Biden, like all those before him, wants to be remembered. These weeks could define how this nation reflects not just on his leadership, but America's place in the 21st century. So the Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Brussels right now. He's reaffirming US foreign policy, sanctions on Russia and a commitment to NATO. And that's because America has to tow a very careful line here with Russia. Joe Biden currently is in the White House meeting the president of Finland. Finland is not a NATO member, but it has an 800 mile border with Russia. America wants to help defend Finland, but not antagonize Russia. And that's because there's a concern here that what if the sanctions don't work? What if Putin is pushed into a corner, he retaliates, he encroaches on NATO land? Now, America says it would then defend um, the NATO territories. But does it really want a long, prolonged war again? Because remember, presidents are also about politics and poll numbers. Joe Biden's poll numbers, they aren't great in the moment. He's got elections in November. And this nation is war weary after 20 years of conflict in Afghanistan and Iraq. And so, for now at least, it appears that America is successfully um, doing this delicate dance of diplomacy. But all eyes are now on what Vladimir Putin does next.